Today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savelle. David did this when he faced Goliath. He didn't just go out there and face Goliath. What did he do? He said, this uncircumcised Philistine will be no different than the lion and the bear. What is he doing? He's remembering previous victories. So three o'clock in the morning, February the 11th, 1969, I got up out of bed and I went into our living room and I walked in there with my hands up like this. And I said, God, I don't know why you still want me. I've been running from you all my life. But if you do, here I am. I surrender. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I immediately received my salvation and I immediately was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I began to speak in other tongues. I could not quit. And I did that for several hours. And when I finally stopped, I turned thinking I'm the only one in the living room. And I looked and my wife and my mother-in-law are sitting on the sofa and they're both crying. And I looked at them and I said, guess what happened to me? And Caroline said, we know. I said, well, how long have you been sitting here? I didn't even know they'd come in the room. How long have you been sitting here? She said, well, about 3.30 this morning, I noticed you were not in the bed and I heard this noise going on in the living room. So I got up to see what was happening and I walked in there and saw what was happening to you. And I called mama and said, mama, you got to get over here right now and see what's happened to Jerry. Because mama had been praying for me, you know, and Carolyn had been praying for me. Carolyn, Carolyn had the entire youth department at Life Tabernacle fasting for my salvation. <laughs> they almost starved to death. <laughs> and if Carolyn wasn't preaching to me, her mama was preaching to me. And I walked over to where they were seated, seated and I took Carolyn and I kissed her. I said, Carolyn, forgive me for being such an idiot and uh, forgive me for, for rebelling. And I said, I promise you from this day forth, I'm going to be a better husband. I'm going to be a better father. And I've surrendered my life to the Lord and I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm shutting my business down and I'm going to preach the gospel. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I've known that since 1957, watching Oral Roberts on television. Then I walked over to my mother-in-law. I said, Mary, thank you for not giving up on me. Thank you for praying for me. And I kissed my mother-in-law right on the lips and told her I loved her. And that's when I knew my experience was real. <laughs> and I ain't never kissed mother-in-law on the lips. I've been born again, hallelujah. All things are new, hallelujah. Amen. And so it took me a little while to shut my business down. And then the Lord impressed upon me to spend the next three months, no less than eight hours a day in your guest bedroom studying the word. Now there was a lady that was one of Carolyn's prayer partners at the church. And she had all those real to real messages of Brother Copeland's first meeting there. And she came over one day and she, she had a, a paper bag full of these messages on reel to reel tape. And she said, Jerry, God told me to bring these to you. And if you'll listen to them, they'll change your life. And I, I looked in that bag and it was all these reel to reel messages that brother Copeland had preached. And I said, well, how am I supposed to listen to them? She said, you don't have a tape player. I said, no. She said, I'll be right back. And so she went home and got her tape player. She said, the Lord told me to give you this, but I was hoping you already had one. And <laughs> And so uh, I was disobedient, but here, I'm bringing it to you. Yeah. Now, back then, you didn't carry your tape player around in your shirt pocket. Right. It was this big and had two speakers that attached to the end of it. And you set it on your desk or your credenza. Yes. And I set it up in my guest bedroom and started listening to those messages. Oh, and, and I outlined every one of them. 
And I, 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 I think uh, during the first month, I had listened to every message at least three times. And I had outlined them to the point, I almost wrote down every word, word for word that he said. And it's getting in me. And I'm, I'm learning how to apply it. And it's beginning to work for us, praise God. And then Carolyn said, uh, uh, or actually the pastor, Jack Moore said, uh, Brother Copeland is returning for another visit. And this was a few months later. And uh, I could hardly wait for him to get there. Man, I'm, I'm not a back row Christian anymore. I'm up on the front. I could hardly wait. I, I'm like a sponge, you know. And uh, as it turned out, Brother Copeland had an accident in his automobile on the way over there. <coughs> Excuse me. He had a, a, a 1969 Pontiac Bonneville. And he had an accident in it on the way over there. And the pastor asked me if I could repair it for him while he was in that meeting. Because Brother Copeland had asked about somebody repairing his car for him. Well, that meant I couldn't go to the day services. Now, I didn't have my shop anymore, but I could do it at home. I still had the, my tools and so forth. And so I didn't get to go to the day services. I'm, I'm repairing his car. And uh, one day he came over to watch me. And I'm grinding this quarter panel. And uh, he's standing there, you know, like this, with those piercing eyes, <laughs> looking down at me. And I'm thinking he can read every thought I got, and I didn't have... All of them weren't good, you know. <laughs> and the, boy, he makes me nervous. I wish he'd gone to the house. It, it was a little awkward with him staring at you, you know. And then he'd ask me a question every once in a while. Finally, I put the grinder down. I said, can I ask you some questions? He said, yes. I said, well, I don't know anybody else who teaches faith like you teach it. And I have questions. He said, what are they? So he allowed me to ask some questions for a few minutes there. And he said, now, I've got to get back and get ready for the service tonight. Will you be there? I said, yes, I will. And so I could hardly wait because I, I didn't get to go to the day services. I could only go to the evening services. So we got over there and, uh, and I'm setting a couple of rows back. They turned it to Brother Copeland. He began preaching. And the same thing happened again. About 15 minutes into his sermon, he just stopped. Now I'm, I'm sitting over uh, around this area here. He said, Jerry, stand up. And I didn't have a clue what he's going to do. And I stood up. He said, I was in prayer today and the Lord showed me that you and I will be a team and we're going to spend the rest of our lives together preaching the gospel together around the world and it'll be your responsibility to believe God for the perfect timing for the team to begin. Sit down. And then he went ahead and finished his sermon. <laughs> Now, that was another first. Yeah, definitely. That was another first. The man who brought the message to me that changed my life, now I'm going to wind up being a team with this man? Spend the rest of my life preaching together with him around the world? That marks you. That's what first are designed to do, yes. to mark you. There are milestones in your lives. Yes. And if you're like me, you never forget them. In fact, many times I'm just sitting in my study or I'm sitting on my airplane and I get to thinking about things that have happened to me. And a lot of times when Brother Copeland and I are preaching together, we'll start talking about things that have happened to us in the past and reminding ourselves of of certain events and certain miracles and breakthroughs we've experienced, they're inspiring to your faith. You know, David did this when he faced Goliath. Yes. He didn't just go out there and face Goliath. What did he do? He said, this uncircumcised Philistine will be no different than the lion and the bear. What is he doing? He's remembering previous victories. Yeah milestones in his life. Amen. And it inspired his faith that this uncircumcised Philistine will be no different than the lion and the bear. Yes. God delivered me out of their hands and God will deliver me out of his hand. Yes. Amen. Uh, first, 
are God's way of helping you break barriers. You ought to write that down. When you experience a first in your life, it's designed by God to create in you the idea that barriers can be broken. Man. I remember when I first started, uh, after I, I left Brother Copeland as a full-time employee, even though we still are a team, we have separate ministries, but we're still a team. We still preach together. We were just recently in Bogota, Colombia, preaching together. I do all of these victory campaigns around the country. There's never been a believer's convention without Jerry Savelle. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I've been in every one of them, not only here, but Charlotte, North Carolina, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Anaheim, California. Amen. So we're still a team. But those first are designed to be barrier breakers for you. Now, as I was about to say, when I, when I first left Brother Copeland's organization as a full-time employee, and I launched out into my own ministry, you know, uh, the same thing was happening to me that, that I saw happen to him when I came to work with him. No church wanted to hear a word I had to say. And so when I launched out, I'd, I'd go to little old places, you know. I mean, I preached in some of the most unusual places you ever thought of in your life, ever seen in your life. I preached in a field, a pasture. People brought lawn chairs and set them out, and my pulpit was a bale of hay. And while I'm preaching, I felt something pulling on my coat. And I turned around, and a goat had my coattail in his mouth. He's about to take the tail off of my coat. And when I had the people at the end bow their heads and gave an invitation, I just closed my eyes while I was praying, and I heard, Moo. I looked down, and a cow came to the front, praise God. Well, at least somebody responded, praise the Lord. I preached in abandoned laundromats. I preached in what used to be bowling alleys. I preached, I actually preached in a place that used to be a paint and body shop. And the pastor said, oh, you're going to love our church because <laughs> it's just like what you came out of. I preached in a morgue. That was the deadest place I ever preached in. <laughs> Amen. And back then, the offerings were terrible. Oh, yeah. oh, my Lord. And many times, Carol and I and the girls would travel with me back then, you know, and we'd, we'd travel together, and we had just enough money to get out of town. And we're believing God, you know, that the offering would be good, so we'd have gasoline to put in the car and maybe, you know, have something to eat on the way back home. Yeah. Well, a lot of times the girls would say, Daddy, we're hungry. Well, I was too. <laughs> Carolyn was too, but I didn't have any money. But God. <laughs> and those are many, many stories, praise God. And I remember uh, somebody, I, I, would, I would meet somebody that would ask me to come, and so they would set up the meeting for me. And so he would arrange for ushers. Now, sometimes there will be 25, 30 people in the service, maybe 70 people in the evening service, you know, if that many. And these are neutral territories, not in churches, you know. And it seemed like to me they'd always go to the Kentucky Fried Chicken place to get a bucket for the offering. <laughs> and they'd pass them chicken buckets around. <laughs> and you could hear the offering. Clonk, clonk, clonk. That's what you call a loud offering. And I never touched the money, and I still don't to this day. But my daughter, my daughters, and my wife, when we get back to where we were staying, they'd pour the money out on the bed and separate the quarters and the dimes and the nickels and the dollars, you know, and, 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 and then they'd count it, and they'd let me know how much it was. 
And then by the time the meeting has ended, you know, we'd, we'd have a tally of, of what came in. And sometimes it was just enough to get back home. Just enough to get back home. But I remember the first time. I'll never forget it. The first time, Russellville, Arkansas. And I was preaching in the National Guard Armory. And after the service that night, Carolyn and the girls dumped the money on the bed and they counted it. And one of them hollered, what I believe it was Jerry and said, Daddy, look. And it was a $100 bill. Wow. All at one time. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Daddy, look. I said, that's a $100 bill. Yeah, Daddy. And the next night, well, it was there three nights. The next night, there was another $100 bill in the offer. Wow. That had never happened. It was a first. And then the third night, there was, uh, uh, before I got to the service, uh, a friend of mine knew just about anybody, everybody that was in that meeting. And I said, do you have any idea who might possibly be the person that's putting a hundred dollar bill in my offering the last two nights? He said, oh yeah, I know who that might be. He said, he, 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 uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a giver. He's a tither. He loves the ministries. He, he, he blesses Brother Hagen. And, and he said, and I'm sure he's blessed Brother Copeland's ministry. He said, uh, I'll introduce you to him. His name, and see, this was a first. You never forget first. Russellville, Arkansas, Leroy Kirkendall. And he introduced me to him. He, he was a barber, had a barber shop in Russellville, and he also sold used cars. Wow. Leroy Kirkendall. He put three $100 bills in my offering over a period of three nights. That was a first. And you know what happened? It broke a barrier. Yes. Yes. It broke a barrier. I never had another offering after that that somebody didn't put a $100 bill in there. And over and over again. And every time we broke a barrier, it would set us up to break the next barrier. Yes. I remember the first time somebody put $500 all at one time in my offering. Wow. $500. Yeah. Wow. It broke a barrier. Yeah. It wasn't long after that, additional people were sowing $500. Yeah. And then one day, praise God, somebody put $1,000 in my offering yeah. all at one time. That was a first, yeah. a first. Now, I'm beginning to catch hold that every time I experience a first, it breaks a barrier, so start expecting more barriers to be broken. And then the first time somebody put $10,000 all at one time, it broke a barrier. Broke a barrier. And then one time I was in Tulsa preaching Brother Hagin. And after the service, a couple came up to me and said, Brother Jerry, uh, God spoke to us that this was to go into your ministry. And they gave me a check for $100,000. That was a first, but it broke a barrier. $100,000 checks started coming more and more frequently. In fact, one day uh, I was at my office and my uh, accountant came over to the executive building and she said, Brother Jerry, we got a check in the mail today. I thought you might want to see it because uh, you know these people and they ask for prayer and they're believing for a harvest on this. And so she showed me the check and it was for $100,000. And I prayed there with her over them and I said, uh, I, I, know, I have their number. I'm going to call them and pray for them personally. And I said, now, Carol, you know what to do. Now, our, our normal procedure of operation is we tithe on all of our income. Amen. And I said, no, you know what to do. That meant put 10,000 of that in the tithe account. And I said, now I'll pray and I'll let you know where to send that later this afternoon because we tithe on all of our income. And so 
I was walking back over to the executive office and I stopped. And the Lord said, how would you like some unusual results today? I said, you know I would. He said, then do something unusual. I said, what? He said, sold the whole 100,000. Carol had not quite reached the uh, administrative office yet. She was about to go in. I said, Carol, wait a minute. She said, what is it, Brother Jerry? I said, don't put 10,000 in the tithe account. Put the whole 100,000 in there. Come on. And I'll let you know where we're going to send it later today. She put it all in there. Now, that was like the first part of the week of this month. And before the month was up, there were three more $100,000 checks came in to the ministry. Now, I'd like to be able to tell you that $100,000 checks just show up all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. But they don't necessarily show up all the time. But that broke a barrier. Amen. See, first are designed to break barriers. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. Now, there was a, a man that I, I knew his father real well. I didn't know him as well as I knew his father. And he called me one day and he said, Brother Jerry, uh, I've been reading your book on From Devastation to Restoration. He said, not only have I read it, but I'm, I'm on the third time of reading it. And he said, Brother Jerry, this, this book, the, the revelation is coming out of this book. It, it is, it, I mean, I've been, in, I've been around this all my life, but he said, this is so fresh <coughs> and so uh, inspiring that I just had to call you and tell you that God is about to turn my business around. Now, I, I need some restoration because I'm experiencing devastation right now. And that's why this book is really ministered to me. He said, but I'm telling you, and I know you've heard this before, but when God turns this around, I'm going to bless your ministry big time. I said, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And so later, several months went by and we received a check in the mail from this man for $350,000. And a letter that said, the God of the turnaround is turning it around. Awesome. Amen. Amen. And then a few months later, we received another check for a quarter of a million dollars. That's over $500,000 already. Before the end of the year, another quarter of a million dollars came in. Amen. And then over the next two years, adding up all that he had done totaled $1.5 million dollars that he had sent in over a period of two years. Okay? So God was turning it around. Maybe you ought to read the book. But anyway, <laughs> he, and his last note was, I'm not done yet. And so uh, I came home one week and uh, I got a call from him. He said, can you come to my office? I said, yeah, I'm home this week. I'd be happy to. And so I went to his office and uh, he called his wife in. I'm sitting across from his desk. He had an envelope and he just pushed it over in front of me. He said, open that. He said, the reason I didn't mail it in because I wanted to just see the expression <laughs> on your face. <laughs> he just pushed it over there to me. And his wife sat down there both you know, waiting for me to open it. When I opened it up, it was a check for $1 million. $1 million. It was a barrier breaker because I had been believing God for years and years and years, and I would confess it often. In fact, the, the ladies in my uh, accounting department and the people in the mail room, they all kind of got a little competitive with this and they were all saying, I'm going to be the one who opens the envelope that has the million dollar check. And the other one said, no, I'm going to be the one to open it. And I'm going to be the one to open it. And so when he gave me that $1 million check, 
On my way home, I called a staff meeting, an emergency staff meeting. And they're all sitting there wondering what this is all about. And I said, and you've been confessing you would open the envelope for the million dollars. And you told me you would open the envelope for the million dollars. And I just want you to know, I'm the one who opened the envelope for the million dollars. I said, now, everybody come up here and touch this and get used to it. Are you ready to see God do something new? What if God is about to move in your life like never before? Today's special offer, the Barrier Breaking First Special Package, contains Jerry Savelle's brand new two-part CD series, Barrier Breaking First, his insightful book, Knowing God, and his best-selling book, If Satan Can't Steal Your Dreams, He Can't Control Your Destiny. In this special package, Jerry reveals a prophetic word given to him about the days to come, how God desires you to experience new first in your life, and how to come into agreement with God and His plan to see them manifest. It's time for you to go further than ever before. It's time for a new breakthrough. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Barrier Breaking First special package. Don't miss what God is about to do. Order now and begin to position yourself for new breakthroughs, new favor, and new blessings. Thank you once again for joining us today. I trust these programs have been a blessing to your life, and I pray that in the name of Jesus, what you've learned, you'll be a doer of it, and God promises when you're a doer of His Word, then you will be blessed in all your deeds. Amen? Before we leave the air, let me remind you of our special product offer. First of all, two CDs entitled Barrier Breaking First. You know, one of the things I've learned about first is every time you have one, it's like a domino effect. It's just one comes right after the other. You're going to enjoy this series, two CDs on Barrier Breaking First. And then this special little book I wrote a number of years ago, and it's still a popular book right here in the ministry. If Satan can't steal your dreams, he can't control your destiny. Don't let Satan steal your dream. God gave you that dream. It's worth fighting for. It's worth holding on to. God wants it to happen for you. And praise God, if you will stay in faith, then God will see to it that that dream becomes reality. Don't let Satan steal your dream. And then once again, this little book, Knowing God. I wrote this book a number of years ago, and it's still a very powerful lesson. One of the greatest teachings I believe I've ever done, knowing God. So this is our resource package for this week. And uh, I want to encourage you to place your order. You can go to jerrysavelle.org, or you can look on the screen and find out all the ordering information and the price. But we encourage you to place your order right now while it's fresh on your mind. And let me encourage you to join us again next week for Adventures in Faith. We look forward to seeing you then. And remember, your faith will overcome the world.